I got my 10 foot cast net. And what I like to do here is I like to make my coils. Doesn't really matter how perfect they are. Take it, follow your net. Come down and what this here is called, this right here is called your horn. This ring around the top. I like to hold it like a foot under the horn right here. And what I do is I take my right hand and hold it straight up. And then I'm gonna follow my left hand and come just to my pocket. And then I'm gonna grab this, this uh, mesh the same way I grabbed the horn. And then I'm gonna bring this weight to my feet. And I'm gonna grab it just above my kneecap right here. Turn it and grab it the same way I grabbed the other bunch of mesh. And now you're ready to load. We're gonna take this on the left side of the net. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna come to the left side. And we'll fling a bunch over my knee. And normally that right there, is a perfect amount. And now I'm gonna take it and come under my elbow and on top of both my elbow and shoulder. I'm gonna take this inside lead line now, bring it, pull that as well on top of my shoulder. Now I'm gonna grab this inside lead line that I just put on my shoulder and I'm just gonna break this bunch right here in half break it in half and I'm just gonna let it bunch up on my forearm here break it in half that's about half right there I'm gonna slide my hand up and grab this bunch of mesh from the inside and then I'm gonna free my pointer finger pinch this lead line with my pointer finger my thumb and that right there is the last thing I'm gonna let go now I'm ready to throw and I got my hands close together and remember this last thing right here is the last thing I'm gonna let go is this lead line now I'm gonna swing my leads. You don't have to swing them too viciously. Just get them swinging, get them moving. And then you're gonna come back, and I like to count myself sometimes. One, two, and I'll go on three. Three, I take it, put some power into it, and boom. That last thing I'm gonna let go of there is I'm pointing a finger at my thumb. And that's what's, ha what's gonna happen is you're gonna watch your net form. You're gonna watch it form, you're gonna let it go, and their weights are just gonna pull it away from you. And there you go. Perfect pancake to catch baits. Shopping for the holidays or a personal upgrade? With countless purchasing options, it's easy to wonder, why should I choose Wholesale Marine? Simply put, quality, variety, and availability with a low price guarantee. Our inventory remains regularly stocked with premier products for your best boating experience. Wholesale Marine is proudly owned and operated as a family business with boating in our blood. Visit WholesaleMarine.com and start your order today. There's two types of double line knots I like to tie, one being a bimini twist, which we're going to tie with this monofilament. The other one I like to tie is a spider hitch, and that works a little better with braid, and I'll show you that one after this. But with a bimini twist, you're going to take a section of line, fold it over to create a double line, so, you know, somewhat of a loop. Pinch it off with one hand, take your hand at the bottom of your loop, put it in your fingers, and then start to twist it. Um, ideally, 20 to 30 twists is enough for your bimini twist. I'm just rolling my hand around while keeping this point stationary, so it's winding all those twists up in the middle. And there's a couple different ways you can tie these bimini twists. You can put it on this real handle of your rod, like so, tighten it up a little bit, just get your rod bent over a little, and it creates the tension that you're gonna need to tie this. So what you'll do is you'll use your left hand holding the tag end, come down here with your right hand, and start to spread it. And when you spread it, it's gonna get really tight, if you hold with your left hand, it's gonna get even tighter. And now what you're gonna do is once you get it really tight, take your left hand holding the tag in and almost like a 45 degree angle, pull it down towards the bottom of your knot. And as you push up with your right hand more, it's gonna to start to bite it and stack it on top of each other. Stop with your index finger and do a half hitch around each part of your double line now to secure it. And then after you know, you've done it around both at one time, to build your knot, you know, to keep it tight, you can do a series of these overhand half hitches. I like to do four or five. So there's three, four, five. And then to secure it off, I do a double half hitch or a triple half hitch. One, two, three, pull it down nice and slow. 
nice and tight. A couple times. Um, and like, see how small mine is? What that's gonna do is it's small and slender. So like this rod here, we're gonna use for a live bait on the kite. But if you were to cast a bimini twist, having it small and short like that, you're gonna be able to fly through the eyes of your rod a lot better. If you tie the thick, you know, bulky bimini twist, it just might get hung up when you go to cast. Right. This is gonna be a spider hitch. So look, it's very similar to a bimini twist once it's finished. It's just gonna be ma different material and a different method of tying it. I'll show you that, but you end up with a double line here, as you see, which is the main goal. The way to tie the spider hitch is you're gonna get another section of double lines. You're gonna create a loop, just like so. And once you have that loop, what you'll do is put it between your index finger and thumb, pinch it, roll it around and create a loop with it, like so. And then you have a long double line tag end. Take that tag end and wrap it around your fingertips, nice and you know somewhat uniform. But as long as you get five or six wraps around your index finger and thumb, come up or down through the bottom of your loop and slowly pull it off your fingers. You're gonna notice it's gonna twist it up for you and then you'll pull it nice and tight and you have a good constriction of a double line knot, we'll call it a spider hitch. And then all you have to do is trim this little tag in, and there you go, You're good to go. Um, it works great with braid. With mono, it ends up being a little bulkier and chunkier just because of the way it slides down on top of itself. Reef fishing guys out here, especially if you're gonna be fishing on the bottom, 15 pound is a little light in my opinion. You can still do it, but if you hook nice mutton snappers or something, they might get you around something, you can't catch them. So I like to start out using 20 pound and 25 pound typically. Uh, it's just a good abrasion resistant size. I'll use this first, some 25 pound here. And I like to do about two arm lengths of it to start my day of fishing. That way, you know, throughout the day, you can progressively just kind of cut down and retie, cut down and retie. And you don't have to constantly be retying, you know, five foot sections a liter or something like that. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG, and fish it drifted technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. So line to line connection. I like to use a double uni quite a bit, especially if I'm using two lines that are similar in diameter. So the double line of the braid in this 25 pound is very close. So what you'll do is create a loop with your leader, lay it next to your braid, take your tag in and join it together by passing it through the loop three times. Wrap it around the braid and your loop. After you get it three wraps, just pull it up nice and slow. You'll see it constrict tight on the braid or on your main line, depending if you're using mono or not. And you'll come down and flip your knot over and do the same thing. So you'll take the end of your braided line or your main line, roll it over and join your leader with three wraps of the tag in through the loop. One, two, three. And then pull it nice and slow. You'll see it constrict. And now you have two knots that are about to butt together and create your double uni line to line connection, just like that. And now that's gonna typically always break at this knot right here. After doing a nice strong double line spider hitch here to this, this monofill or this fluorocarbon just won't withstand the braided strength. So if you're ever fishing, you know, and you break off, a lot of times it'll be down here. So you'll still have a nice section of that fish. Pound fish braid you got on. This is gonna be 40 pound braid on these spinning rods. Some of the smaller ones have 20, but it's a mixture of 20, 30, and 40 pound braid on a lot of these spinners. And then as far as hooks and stuff go, guys, this style of fishing, we use jig heads, not much heavier than that. Now, if you, you can use them heavier than that if you have a lot of current or a big bait. Um, I kind of like to drift the baits back and let them sit on the bottom naturally. So with this jig head, we'll use this type of knot. We'll pass it through the eye of our hook. 
And then what we're gonna do is come behind or underneath our main line of our fishing line and create three loops around that line. Two, three. Now once you've done three loops, pass your tag in up through the bottom of those three loops and holding your tag in in your main line, just kind of pull the hook away and you'll see it kind of get tied on each other and pop right down. Use the anchor trusted by professionals. Fortress anchors are designed lighter, set faster, and provide stronger holding power than the competition. For the best value in anchoring safety and convenience, use the legendary Fortress anchor. But that three wrap knot works very well. I'll tie all the swivels with that. Um, you can tie a 400 pound Goliath grouper leader with that knot. Uh, you can tie about anything with that knot, big ropes, everything. But uh, it works good for fishing quite a bit. Um, so this is kind of the rig we like to use on the reef though, guys. About you know six foot, eight foot of leader to your braid, to a nice little jig head. Um, we'll put pilchards on that, pitch them out to the bottom, just have some fun with it. Hook them a couple different ways. I like to pinch them on their cheeks, right behind their eyes to hold them. And you can hook them up through the chin, right up in the middle here, kind of up through the, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna close their mouth and make it a nice bottom bait. They're not gonna twist. A lot of times if you hook a bait on the bottom and he's not hooked in the face and there's current, he'll be twisting around, not looking right. So that's one way we can hook them. Another way we can hook them is through the belly. Right under here, you'll see there's two little fins on the bottom of these, two almost belly peck fins. Just go right above those and belly hook them, just like that. And then he doesn't really stand a chance. Yeah, he'll swim this jig for, I mean, relatively, what, 60 seconds, two minutes before he might be dead with that hook in him. So fish him like that. Pitch him out, fish the bottom, feel it twitch around. If you feel this dude stop twitching and ain't nothing going on, check it out, bring it in. If he's dead, we'll get a fresh one, or if he's, we'll present him a little better as a dead bait. Sometimes you can chunk them up or butterfly them, and they work better as a dead bait that way. Oh, it's a big mangrove. Swing him in there. Swing him in here. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Mangrove snapper. Mangrove. Yeah. Yeah, they have that. They call them gray snappers, but they have that dark bar that usually shows up against their head right there. So they're a little bit darker than this, but the reason why he's so white is probably because he's been out here hanging out in the ocean. But they're good snappers to eat too. Real tasty. There you go, buddy. Pull him up to your right. That way, Chad's gonna help you with a net. There you go, team. Nice job, buddy. That's what we're looking for. Hey guys, I'm Captain Jack here with Two Conks Charters. Let me tell you about Blue Wave. This right here is the best boat cleaner there is. It's ocean safe. We have 26 boats in our fleet, and you know what? We have to keep them clean. Right here in our marina, we have a lot of wildlife from birds, we got manatees, and a lot of nurse sharks, and there's other fish that come in here all the time. This product here is not gonna keep your boat clean, but it's gonna keep the ocean safe. It's good for the reef, good for the manatees, and it's good for us.